Narain Kini is widely admired for his role as a meditation trainer and his significant contributions to the practice of heartfulness meditation. He is renowned for introducing the 5C framework, a core concept of the Heartfulness Institute, which offers valuable guidance to those striving for greater balance and integration in their lives. Through his work, Narain Kini has effectively integrated heartfulness meditation into the corporate world, inspiring professionals to incorporate meditation into their daily routines. The 5C framework, championed by Narain and firmly grounded in the principles of the Heartfulness Institute, empowers individuals to find contentment, gain clarity in their thoughts, maintain a calm and focused disposition, confront uncertainties with courage, and foster compassion for themselves and others. Furthermore, Narain Kini is a prolific artist whose work is sought after by non-profit organizations for auction, with the proceeds benefiting charitable causes. His artistic journey has earned extensive recognition, and his creations have been prominently featured in various magazines and articles, underscoring his multifaceted talents and unwavering commitment to positively influence both the art world and society at large. Join us at Tall Talks to listen to the powerful words of Narain. From the core of my heart, I want to convey immense respect and gratitude to all the speakers who spoke before me and the ones who will speak after me. Thank you very much. It is when hearts like this come together, profound changes happen and transformation happens. And hence, gratitude to a forum like Tal Talks to bring us all together. A little bit of rubbing each other <laughs> in some form or shape, our hearts will transform many more hearts. That's the hope. I think uh, the positioning of the talk is appropriate. It's almost like you send a consolidator after several speakers and say, try to bring everything that they said together into one talk and let's see if you can do that. And none of those rehearsed, I assure you that much, but probably you will see a glimpse of everybody's talk in what I'm about to present. I am a volunteer of the Heartfulness Institute. We saw significant impact on people. I think it got an X factor during COVID. When you really look into it, what we saw was people went to work to earn a living and brought back home stress not a fair exchange. Then they said, in order to overcome this stress, I have to leave my family time, which is exactly the time I can overcome my stress, and go to some third place, either a therapist, or a meditation center, or some kind of an activity that takes me away from my family. We thought we should shift that paradigm for corporate America. And the shift we wanted to do was take the solution to the problem. Not request the problem to go to the solution and each time the solution is different. Mm. So what you see here is the world headquarters of Heartfulness Institute, <coughs> which is very close to the city of Hyderabad. This is the world's largest meditation center. At that time, we can have 100,000 people meditating together. And I have been a part of such a meditation experience, there is pin drop silence. I want to now do an inside out scenario. Everybody works hard, we go get our education, we find the right jobs. Throughout the process, we have this struggle for existence, survival of the fittest, and eventually we come out. And we are looking at a ladder of this sort because all through our childhood, college, and also our workplace, we have been measured with a metric system, and we are ranked accordingly. It continues when we get into the career, and then family life. So all of our adulthood, we've used what we call a reference sheet, right from our childhood, onto our adulthood, onto our professional lives. Guess what are we going to pass on? The baton we are going to hand over is not worth passing on. Like they say in the valley, if you are first in a rat race, you are still a rat. <laughs> so is that race worth running? 
is the fundamental question we ask. So then how do we do that? Do we change the nature or the format of the race? Or do we try to adapt a different system? Each of the speakers before us has given us something to take up. If you leave this forum remembering a few code words that can change all of our lives. So I leave five C's with you. Simple and easy. And pay close attention. Each of the C's has been mentioned by the prior speakers. You just have to dig in deep inside your heart and see, did you find a place for it? Or it was just a word that just happened to sneak past you. If it has, this is an opportunity for you to grab it and tuck it deep inside your heart because it's going to come handy. Not tomorrow, the next moment of your life. We believe through meditation, inner peace can be developed. Just like we say, we want to change the world one talk at a time at Thal Talks. We want to transform lives one heart at a time. The process is simple. The institute has been around for over 100 years. We don't market, we don't promote until recently when the youth started saying, this is the day of the social media, what are you guys trying to do word of mouth here? Let's impact more. That's when we started saying, okay, let the youth run these programs. Second, we are 160 plus countries. 100% free of charge. We have never, we will never charge for uh, any of our sessions. We have touched universities, schools, hospitals, corporations, and we have touched rural of the rural villages across the globe. Our idea is to extend this whole business about don't give a fish but teach them fishing into why don't we arm um, the next generation with tools to manage their mental, physical, emotional, social, and spiritual health. Everything else will fall in place. Like one of our speakers said, you never know if this disaster is going to hit your home. But when it hits, you know how to deal with it. You have all the tools. That's what is going to matter. I want to also connect it with meditation. What are these five C's? I'm going to let out a secret today. All the uh, indications of the prior speakers was the home of answers for all the questions is in the heart. Our heart is not just a pumping station. It is also a phenomenal center that we have not tapped into. One of the prior speakers spoke about the wisdom behind the ancient scriptures. Why does one meditate on the heart? The heart has these energy centers. Each center awakens the sea in you. First, this whole concept of contentment against having desires. We mistake all these words for something else. We think without ambition one cannot make a living. Ambition is about comparing yourself with the next door neighbor or your friend, or your colleague, or your classmate. Aspiration is what we need to seek. Aspiration is for me to become a better human than I was yesterday, to become a better engineer, better doctor, better professional, better friend than I was yesterday. In this rat of comparing ourselves with the next one, we don't actually set a high standards for ourselves. We don't unleash our own potentials. We are constrained by the benchmark that we have set for ourselves. The next C is about calmness. Irrespective of the situation, the energy center for calmness is within us, but we seek for it outside. Let me go spend this Sunday at that place where everybody gets together nicely dressed and I will find calmness. You will. I am not saying no. What about the 30 minutes after that? So let's build that center of calmness within ourselves, develop it, cultivate it, nurture it, and use it. The next C I am going to talk about is compassion. Not sympathy. Compassion. I am not a strong believer of non-violence, I will be honest with you. What does non-violence mean? 
I will not commit any violence. What about people on whom the violence is committed? Are you going to just leave them by the wayside? What is going to be your response to that? Compassion addresses both. So compassion and empathy is far more potent than trying to sign off as I am a non-violent human being. So compassion comes in there. Compassion many a time again gets misplaced with passion. Corporate America is all about passion. If you follow your passion, if you are passionate about this, you can achieve your goals. <coughs> now combine compassion and passion, see the outcome. You will find a more benevolent outcome than otherwise. So it won't be about dollars and cents, it will be about hearts and minds. And you are seeing corporations around us, the ones hosting us here today, trying to demonstrate that day in and day out. But we mistake them to be corporations trying to give us a job. Look deeper, search within and you will find the combination at play. Let's look at the other aspect about courage. We spoke about that. We all have choices. Many speakers before me could have buckled under the pressure and the circumstances they followed. But it took immense courage. And when corporations and organizations stand with them and give them a little bit of a nudge and support, that courage can be unleashed. And they'll be on their own very soon. So why not give them those tools? Now the last one is very interesting. It's clarity. What has clarity got to do with all these things? Are you connected with that vision thing that we spoke about? Think deeply. When you walked into this room, you had several choices of where to sit. Did you examine how long it took for you to find a chair? Just when you were about to sit, you found another chair. And you said, maybe I'm better off there. Then you said, oh, there's nobody there. Maybe I'm better off here. Then you saw all empty chairs in the front and said, maybe I should go there. Then your mind said, nah, everybody will watch you. <laughs> you sit down here. Life is all about decisions. Through a simple practice of spending 25 to 30 minutes in meditation, any form, anything that's easy for you, we suggest heartfulness meditation because it is simple, it's on the heart, it's free, it's available all over the globe, it is guided, you have trainers all across the world. Use that. Watch the clarity that comes. What happens when you develop clarity in decision making? Magic. Time expands. Your 8 hour days get accomplished in 4 hours and you'll sit there wondering, I just got 4 more hours, what do I do? Give it back, pay it forward. Then you'll see you have a lot of time for NGOs, non-profits, <coughs> and you can happily have a profession as well. And guess what? Your performance in the organization is going to come with its own X factor because you've learned to give. And give your time, your effort, your energy, and do it so unconditionally. Now I want to switch over to another topic because there are thoughts, and I heard conversations outside by the water fountain. Why are these guys talking about all this? Why are they doing all this? What is in it for them? Now, we spend a lot of time checking each other out for our outfits, for what we wear, and I am certain all of us also spend few seconds, if not a lot, microseconds thinking, is this appropriate? I certainly sent an email saying, is this business casual or business formal? Please tell me. <laughs> so, we did pay attention to how we are going to look at a new end. I want to propose something. Have we been mindful of what we are thinking? What if we had a negative thought? We grew a few extra gray hair. Every time I wanted to do something unjust for someone, I developed a few wrinkles on my face. Would I still do that? Let's think about it. Because it is going to transform the way we look at the world. And we send them pause to think about these things. Our ability and availability to look at ourselves in the mirror has stolen the time to look within. And if we take the first 30 minutes of the day to look within, it's amazing. You will never have to look at the mirror. 
I can guarantee that your heart is going to glow so bright, everybody is going to look at you as the most beautiful, most handsome person they have ever met. That is the beauty about investing in your own self and trying to change yourself internally with all these qualities that develop. Now, you are not going to say, today's meditation I am going to develop compassion. No, magical thing is all the seeds get cultivated. I am going to wrap up with a story. Stories seem to leave deeper impressions and people remember. There was this old farmer in Iowa. I believe they have a contest as to who grows the best corn. Every year this farmer used to win the first place. So a journalist goes to him and says, what is so magical about your corn? He says, well I do what I do. Then he says, I found out the secret, but I don't know why. So he says, what is the secret you found out? I believe you give away your corn to your neighbors. Aren't you worried next time they'll get the prize? He says, when the corn ripens, the wind blows it. And the pollen goes this way or that way, and I can't break the wind. But if I share the best seeds with my neighbors, guess what happens? When the wind blows, both of us are safe. <laughs> and our harvest is the best. Now, after this, if my neighbor gets the award next time, I'll be more than happy. Because he's going to convey the gratitude that I gave him some seeds. That is why organizations that meet here spend the time. It is their seeds of corn that they are trying to share. Sow them where you want. Let the winds of compassion carry those seeds to many more hearts, touch many more lives. I think we can transform society like this. We just started in villages, corporates, schools, colleges. I want to give a simple case study of what we did at one corporation which does online business starts with an A. <laughs> Four years back, we wanted to share because they came to us saying there are several employees that are stressed out. First time we went to share with them a talk like this, we had 16 people. Last quarter I gave a talk because they were coming back to work post-COVID and there was more stress coming back to work. They were not used to it. 16,500 employees of their corporation are practicing meditation. <laughs> One company. And to service them across, this is worldwide, they have got three sessions a week globally happening, all volunteers. Nobody is paid for. And 62 people across this corporation globally have become trainers because it has changed their lives. This is the Sigma effect. Let's try and see how we can do our bit. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Because you have to share something about the organization, I'm leaving some slides for you to reflect. Hopefully there are some takeaways. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.